Hi everyone, so this time I would like to share one of my personal favorite tricks um, that I came across some time ago um, because basically I tried to figure out whether there is an easier and quicker way how to make a beautiful round fold and not just only for colors like this but also for other details and especially for close-up renders like this type of shard fold um, doesn't really look great and so I came across um, a pretty good approach which I will show you here um, and what I have here is just the regular shirt from Close Modular Configurator and I also set up the color as I always would set up when I start to uh, when I put together a shirt so both color and color stand is one layer and I have one fold angle and uh, not fold angle one internal line which is the fold line um, so here I also want to remind about how to determine uh, what kind of fold angle you need to use because we will be using fold angle. Um, so basically when you move to textured surface view, as you know, you can see the back and front side of fabric visualized. Uh, so the back side of the fabric is um, gray like this and the front side doesn't change. So as you can see now, the front side of the fabric uh, is looking up for my color and when I click on the internal line you can see that the fold line is uh, fold angle is on zero but if I flip it and now the back side of uh, back side of the fabric is looking up um, in this case the fold angle changes automatically to 360 so basically just really this depends how you set up your file um, but in my case the right side of the fabric will be looking up um, so I will switch back to the normal thick textured surface view and um, basically the secret behind this trick is to use two not one fold lines um, so quite simple just offset as internal line your original fold line um, normally I use two millimeter distance because I think that's just very regular um, amount of fold for shirts but if you have if you use thicker fabric you would probably need to increase this distance to create a thicker fold now I have two lines and I need to assign a new fold angle so here we use fold angle of 90 because if you use zero it will be just sharp like this so 90 is a straight angle and when you simulate, you can already see that um, a fold is created. Of course, you still have these two sharp lines, but at least there's some kind of dimension to this fold. It's not just one sharp fold. And if you do like life changes in front of people asking you to do some changes to design, this is actually a pretty good way where to stop because these two lines also um, makes the color more stable and then you have that kind of dimension of, uh, of your fold um, and you can still do quick changes without disturbing anything here and as you can see I'm using particle distance 10 so it's not high quality and also if I unstrengthen it still kind of keeps the form quite well so this is where you can stop um, but if you want higher quality of course I will show that as well so for next steps it's um, important to keep the color strengthened just to to help out your simulation and um, oh yeah one thing I forgot to show you here as well just uh, if you do want a smoother fold at this point you would switch off fold rendering for the fold line and you don't even have to simulate at this point it already creates this smooth shape so you don't have those two kind of sharp folds anymore so this is a really really nice function here um, but because I want to add another layer it's better to keep the fold rendering because it will kind of maintain that uh, stability of my simulation okay so now I will use layer clone over to create another layer of this color and here I use over because for the software it's easier to simulate a layer which is on top because if you would put a layer underneath, then you would probably have more um, simulation and uh, collision problems. So just put it on top. And if you have, if for your original 
color you have it like this that uh, the back side of the fabric is looking up then you would use layer clone under because even though it is under it would still put it over um, yeah so i will go back to my original setup okay so now i can simulate and you probably have noticed if you have done this before then often when you use this function and simulate your top layer first goes up and then it rushes back to where it's sewn um, normally it works quite okay there's not so much simulation or collision problems but uh, often this can really create uh, collision problems and maybe um, yeah it can kind of disturb some other detail that you already have so I think I introduced this already in my previous video but just to remind you if you simulate both layers um, when they are frozen so basically freeze everything that's in your workspace stop the simu uh, simulate stop the simulation and then unfreeze and then you kind of avoid that motion of color going up and then down okay next step as you can see now because I layer cloned now the internal lines are sewn together between the layers and it has that um, shadow, of, a shadow of the seam very easy way how to fix it just with edit sewing select the sewing lines and in 3d seam line put intensity on zero but you have to do it on both sides in this case because uh, for some reason this is not linked even though both sides are linked okay and then you can see that the color itself is quite puffy so this is the reason of um, so this is caused by the additional thickness collision so 2.5 is quite quite a lot so we can start by putting it on one if you for example keep the particle distance on 10 because when you decrease the additional thickness collision and you put and you have high particle distance then the simulation can get um, a bit unstable so it's better to kind of balance that and of course when we want like high quality um, look we put everything on particle distance 5 so once you do that you can also put additional thickness collision on 0 0.5 and you will still have um, stable result like this and then the layers come come very close together to each other okay so now I will also unstrengthen the bottom layer so the simulation is a bit more natural and then I will switch off the fold rendering here so that I have this nice smooth shape and when you simulate you know the shape is not lost at all but you can notice here these little triangles the shadows are created um, if that's bothering you there's also a very simple flip fix for that just select um, the color and change mesh type from triangle to quad and this will smoothen out um, the issue so now everything is really smooth yeah, so this is pretty much the approach that I use to get a very beautiful, smooth um, fold. And you can use it not only in this case, but there's so many applications for that. Basically, everything that folds, you can use this approach for that. And one thing, you can also play around with the fold angles a little bit. So if you increase the fold angle, um, then basically the fold will become a little bit bigger I don't know if that's visible now but yeah that's that's basically what you can also try on and um, yeah what else in this case oh yeah and another benefit of using two fold lines is that uh, of course now I'm working with the default fabric and default fabric by default is very stable in simulation um, but when whenever you use delicate fabric like silk or fab fabric that bends very easily then when you use one line one fold line and you use two layers it's really difficult to kind of keep that one fold line um, stable so in this case having two fold lines 
will really really help out your simulation significantly so i do really recommend using these two fold lines for any kind of fold you're working with so that's it um regarding this trick um, i hope it's helpful in your work so please please share if you have any questions or you face any problems um, i will try to help you out and give you some suggestion 